We filed the 601A waiver like four years ago, and now we get this request for evidence. The clients came in, they practically gave up hope. There were discussions about withdrawing the case. It's just, it was so heartbreaking. On a difficult case, in a very difficult circumstance, without new additional documents, what do you do? I'm gonna walk you through that. Let's go. Hi everyone, my name is Joseph. I'm the managing partner here at Sound Associates where we solve legal problems with creative solutions. The legal problem in this case is that we needed to prove that there was extreme hardship. If we can successfully prove that the hardship is extreme and hard enough, then this person who's their spouse, who's been unlawfully here for so long, then they can get a green card. USCIS has determined that your request for a provisional unlawful presence waiver does not include sufficient evidence that your qualifying relative would experience extreme hardship if you were denied admission to the United States. Your claim your spouse has medical issues and require care. In support of your claim, you submitted all these medical documentation. USCIS is not in the position to reach conclusions regarding your spouse's current medical condition. Please submit additional evidence regarding the severity of the condition. Then, the financial consideration. You stated that your spouse would experience extreme financial hardship during a period of separation. In support of this claim, you submitted tax documents and pay stubs. If you think there's more evidence for you to submit, please provide it and then they give you a list. And in the end, in bold, in caps, and in underline, no extreme hardship determined. That was the request for evidence that they got after four years of waiting, after preparing over like a thousand pages, and they were sitting in our office disheartened right? They were like barely talking. They don't know what to do. They feel like they put so much into this and now the case might be denied. We had our entire team there. We came up with a strategy. We said it's still worth it to try to combat this. Um, there's still hope, right? We believe there's still hope, right? And so they said, okay, well, let's, let's just try. Here's the brief. In the beginning, we talk about the law. We talk about the standard of proof. We talk about the analysis of their case, we, we, we quoted a lot from their uh, personal testimony. And then we go into the different sections. The first section, extreme medical and mental hardships. The RFE never mentioned the mental part, but that is there. The factors didn't even include the mental hardships, but it is a hardship. Then we talk about the family ties and their personal goals. And then we have the conclusion. So we give a few more additional uh, sections, which we totally did in the previous filing. The truth is, after the meeting, the client really couldn't provide much more. We had to go through all of the prior filing, pull out everything, address the USCIS officer's concern, and argue it to the best of our ability without any new documentation. We essentially told the officer, uh, we previously submitted all of these things. Maybe you missed it, maybe it was lost, maybe the scan didn't go through. We wanna provide it again. And here we wanna directly make it as clear as possible, the medical hardships. And we highlighted everything. We made a lot of tables directly linking. This is the medical hardship and linking it to directly how the suffering would occur should the separation happen. We argued both points. We argued if the waiver is not approved, there will be a separation and there will be a hardship. We argued the position that if they both left the United States, there will be a hardship. We are only required to argue one, we argued both. Because in the absence of client providing the documentation, the best thing we can do is argue. We had like two full teams of people working on this. It was Gabby, it was Margaret, it was their team. They worked on this day and night over and over again. When the clients lost hope, we didn't lose hope. We filed it and the case was approved. This outcome could have been either way. There was no guarantee, but if we didn't try our best, then we would for sure not know if we had tried our best, what would the outcome be, right? And so by doing our best, if the case get denied, at least we could sleep at peace, at least the client could know they tried their best as well. But in this case, we're very happy to report the case was approved. So if you have any questions about waivers, about how to prove extreme hardship, we'd love to jump on a call, discuss and strategize. Take care.